Ford used to make compliance electric vehicles. They were okay. The Ford Focus was okay. They didn't have a great luggage space because, well, it was an internal combustion engine vehicle that had been converted to an electric one. And yeah, it was an okay car. But that's the real problem with companies that take internal combustion engine vehicles and make them okay compliance car. What happens if you take a name, a brand that has been intrinsic to a company's existence for more than half a century and make that the focus for your electric vehicle efforts? Not so long ago, Ford decided it was going to make a new electric car. It was going to be another compliance car. And for whatever reason, Ford was making it under duress. It was a car that Ford didn't really want to make, but it knew it had to. And then for reasons that I'm sure will be the subject of another video, Ford did the impossible. It did a U-turn. It took a car that was already in development and stopped it from being a compliance vehicle. It changed the design of the car. It made some significant tweaks to how the car looked, how the car drove, and most importantly, what those vehicle specifications were. And the result of that U-turn is this, the Ford Mustang Mark E. Behind me is a car that seems to fulfill the duties of an electric SUV and an electric sports car. It's got space, it's got a front trunk, it's got a rear trunk, it's got plenty of luggage space, it's got a flat floor in the back. Six footers can sit in the back with ease. It's got an EPA targeted range of 300 miles with its highest 100 kilowatt hour battery pack or 99 kilowatt hour battery pack. And yet, this is not a car with a $100,000 price tag. This is a car that's going to start in the mid 30s after you put in incentives. This is a car with a high performance variant that's not going to be a six figure sum car. This is a car that's going to sell for Mustang money with comparable pricing to an internal combustion engine Mustang. It's just a high performance SUV and it's just been revealed today here in LA ahead of the LA Auto Show. But of course, you're not here to watch me stand in front of a car and talk to you. You want to know more about the car's performance. So while I share some of the footage from the heavily choreographed launch event, complete with Idris Elba, who apparently once worked for Ford in the UK on a production line long before his big acting break, let's go over some of the important specs for the Mustang Mark E. At launch, there will be lots of different models available depending on where you live in the world. In Europe, you're going to get three, the Mustang Mark E, the Mustang Mark E all-wheel drive, and the Mustang Mark E first edition. In the US, meanwhile, you're going to get the Mustang Mark E Select, Mustang Mark E Premium, Mustang Mark E California Route 1, Mustang Mark E first edition, and finally, the Mustang Mark E GT. That's the highest performance one. The first edition, as you might expect, gets the largest battery pack and all-wheel drive and puts out 248 kilowatts from its twin electric motor all-wheel drive setup. That's the same for all of the launch Mark E models with all-wheel drive, with 582 newton meters available in terms of torque. We're told the GT, when it launches, will get even more power. Range on the WLTP test cycle is said to be 540 kilometers for the all-wheel drive version, but the EPA estimated range is expected to be closer to 300 miles. The discrepancies between these two numbers is not due to any differences in the vehicles in different markets, but rather differences in test conditions for each of the country's rating systems. The best range, though, will come from the Mark E rear-wheel drive models. As you might expect, they're more efficient and they will peak at 600 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle when you use a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack and 450 kilometers with the 75 kilowatt hour battery pack. Because each market is going to have different naming conventions and trim levels for their various Mustang Mark E models, I'm not going to go super deep into all of this, but suffice to say, it's a car that will be priced to sell and says Ford will be a car that will make it money from day one. Ford's first edition is looking at a five second sprint time, the same as its all wheel drive Mark E, but the rear wheel drive only Ford Mustang Mark E will take a little longer. The upcoming Mustang Mark E GT meanwhile, which won't be available at launch as I've already said, will be offering 
sprint times in the threes. In the US, prices will range from the mid-30s after incentives all the way up to $60,000. And while the various choices of drivetrain and power packs will exist, every Mustang Mark E will feature the maximum AC charger possible. 10 kilowatts single phase in the US and 11 kilowatts three phase in Europe. Rapid charging will be set at 130 kilowatts for the smaller 75 kilowatt hour pack variants, while the larger 99 kilowatt hour ones will be able to charge at up to 150 kilowatts. And yes, DC quick charging appears to be a standard fit item. There's future compatibility for autonomous driving too, with all of the Mustang Mark E's coming with the necessary hardware for semi-autonomous driving system in the future. It's going to use eye tracking rather than requiring you to have your hand on the steering wheel. And Ford says it will roll that out using over the air software updates. Yes, I did say over the air software updates. This isn't a car that Ford is scrimped with. This is a serious car and it's most definitely not a compliance car. Ford also seems to have leveraged its Ford Sync systems to a new level too. There's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as standard, plus onboard route planning systems that are weather, terrain, traffic and vehicle aware. Route planning will also include intelligent routing to charging stations. Of course, purists will moan that this isn't a Tesla or that it's maybe not really a Mustang. But for the past few days, I have been a guest of Ford in LA and I can tell you that everyone at Ford that I've met seems to be behind this car. We've learned everything in the last few days about the car from its LG Chem modular battery packs. As you already know, there are two pack choices through to its A, B over the air software update system that gets updates in the background and then automatically switches to the latest system update the next time you turn the car on. We even got to ride around the roads of Hawthorne in an engineering pre-production prototype right next to SpaceX's headquarters to see what the Mustang Mark E feels like inside. Sadly, we didn't get to drive it ourselves. The cars we're seeing today are pre-production and are still being refined ahead of series production. But so far, I can tell you one thing for sure. This is a car that already really moves and handles well. We even got some time with Ford Executive Chairman Bill Ford, someone who has wanted the company to electrify its lineup and stands very much behind this shift towards electric vehicles. In order to be taken seriously, Ford believes it needs to electrify its key models. The Mustang and F-Series pickup trucks are in there. Yeah, that's right. Built Ford Tough is going to get a plug too. Ford invited me over to Dusseldorf in Germany a couple of weeks ago to give this car a real going over, to learn exactly what makes it tick. And today, I'm going to share it all with you. Now, I don't have long with this car, so let's go over some of the features. The front end of the Mustang Mark E is very Mustang inspired. In fact, if you look at the front end of the car from the side, it looks very much like the traditional Mustang design of the current generation internal combustion engine sports car of the same name. At the front, you get the classic Mustang badge, and you also get these louvres down low here. Now, these louvres are designed to allow the car to be as aerodynamic as possible, while all also allowing the radiators behind them to get access to air when they're needed to cool the battery pack or the motor or to provide air conditioned air to the inside of the vehicle. If we continue our walk around here, you'll notice that the headlights are very much like the original Mustang design. And that's a theme that's carried to the rear of the vehicle as well. You also get this wonderful double scoop here, which you think is almost as if there is an internal combustion engine underneath, but there's not. It's a front trunk, a frunk. And inside this frunk is the largest cargo space of any EV on the market. That's what Ford has told me. There's also a drain plug in this, and that's because Ford says it wants you to tailgate with it, have a tailgating party, or maybe that should be a front trunk party. You can fill this up with ice, put your beers in there when you're watching the sports ball, and then the ice will just drain away when it turns to water. It's also designed to be hosed down. So if you've got sports gear or anything in here that might get the car dirty, you can just hose it down and everything is fine. At the side of the Mustang Mark E, you've got your charge port door, which being a European version of this vehicle is set up for three phase charging from AC as well as DC quick charging. The US version, of course, 
will just have single phase charging and DC quick charging. But Ford says in each market, it will make the fastest available charging as standard. Now the renderings of the Ford Mustang Mark E that leaked a couple of weeks ago had door handles. And as you can see this version of the vehicle, which is a pre-production model, doesn't have a door handle. And that's because if you press this button here, it will self-present the door handle. The same is true at the rear. You press the button, the door presents itself, and you can put your hand in and open the door. Now, there's a mechanism inside the door that pushes the door open and presents itself. Unlike the Tesla version, which has a little notch that could catch in small people's hands, the Ford version doesn't have. But when you do this, it just keeps the door at that point. You can't close it again until you open it. And then you can close. Moving towards the rear of the vehicle, you'll notice there's a bit of an interesting styling thing here. This is because Ford wanted to keep the classic design of the Mustang while simultaneously allowing for lots of extra headroom in the rear. Now, because this is an electric vehicle, there's no transmission tunnel and the inside of the cabin floor is totally flat. But this extra bit here essentially hides that extra headroom behind this black piece of trim. It means that if you're a six footer, you can easily sit in the back and it also gives you access to some extra cargo space. Meanwhile, at the rear of the vehicle, you have your automated tailgate that you're going to find in most cars these days, as well as this very cute parcel shelf idea. It's not actually a parcel shelf. It comes over to Ford from its Puma family. And what it means is that you don't have any of the usual trim pieces that you'd normally find for a parcel shelf. They're not required anymore. But this allows privacy for whatever is in the rear of your vehicle. And it's attached to the tailgate. So when the tailgate lifts up, this swings up into place to protect the rear from prying eyes. Uh, but when you're ready, it just closes and it ensures that you can still see out of the rear window. Keeping with the Mustang theme, you'll also notice we've got this triple tail light arrangement. Now, just like the internal combustion engine sports car Mustang, these are animated when you're using them as a turn signal. I don't know if you've ever been behind a Mustang in traffic, but you'll notice that the turn signal animates and pulses to indicate which direction you're waiting to turn. Now, unlike your internal combustion engine Mustang, which doesn't have great headroom in the rear, the rear of the Mustang Mark E is incredibly spacious. I can sit in here without any problems. Now, I'll admit I'm not particularly tall, but I've got a good four, five, six inches of headroom. The roof of this car is going to be optionally either a solid roof or this glass roof. And the glass roof is treated to make sure there's very minimal reflective energy pass through it. So you're not going to have any issues with the interior of the cabin heating up. I've been told actually it helps keep the interior of the car more cool than it would with a traditional roof. It also means you're not going to get any glares from the sunlight. So if we sit in the driver's seat of the Ford Mustang Mark E, you'll notice it's a very spacious feel up here too. There is a dual level center console with storage below as well as storage above. There's all of the usual connections for smartphones, including both USB-C and USB-A. Bluetooth connectivity. And interestingly, the center console system can have two telephones displayed at the same time. This is because Ford says a lot of customers do end up with a phone for work and a phone for home, or if there's a couple traveling, both phones can be connected at the same time. The driver information display behind the steering wheel is very non-intrusive and it gives you a great view of what's in front of you. Look out through the front window and it's very clear that you're behind the wheel of a Mustang. That front bonnet is completely unmistakable. There's this great tactile button that you can use for volume control and also picking other things. It's tactile so you can push it as well as turn it. And then the gear selector is your standard twist gear selector. 
The Mustang Mark E can be fully upgradable over the air, so both the center console system as well as aspects of the car's performance and drivetrain can have their software upgraded via over-the-air updates. Unlike a lot of update systems where the car will update itself and then if something goes wrong, you're up the creek without a paddle, Ford says that this car has an A-B system set up. So while you're driving, the car can actually be downloading the latest software or while you're parked up, it downloads it in the background and then the next time you turn the car on that new software is automatically applied. So there you are we've talked about specifications we've talked about some of the design language and behind me yes that is the Ford Mustang Mark E GT the highest performance highest spec version of this very important electric car. Ford used to get criticised quite rightly for making nothing but compliance electric cars. Ford was criticised quite rightly for not really caring about electric vehicles. And as I've said earlier in this video, although that change did happen from compliance car to production electric car that everyone will want to drive, the reasons behind that change are really irrelevant right now. What's important is that this is a vehicle that Ford says it will bring to market this is a car that Ford says it's going to make a profit on from day one. This is a car that Ford wants you to buy. And more importantly, this is a car that seems to have done the impossible. It's taken a muscle car brand, a brand that has stood for gas guzzling, large amounts of power, all out, balls to the wall performance. And it's turned it into an electric vehicle, but not just any electric vehicle, an electric vehicle with guts, an electric vehicle that, based on my very short ride, has the performance it needs to live up to the Mustang badge. Ford, I don't know where this came from, but please do it again with more vehicles. That's it. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider making a donation through Patreon. Send us a coffee through Ko-fi or buy some swag from our swag store. I'll be back with more LA Auto Show coverage in the next few days. But until then, bye from LA and keep evolving.